If you watched the last video, you would have seen me making this bifold wallet. And that led me to making a few more wallets and a whole bunch more wallets. But that got me setting up my splitter again. And that has been the one piece of equipment that I've had many questions about over the years. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to tweak your own splitter if you have one, what the benefits of having a splitter is, do you actually even need one? And what I've done to mine to be able to get it to split nicely. So let me get this tidied up and put the splitter onto the desk. So if you're new here, my name is Tarek. I've been a full-time artisan for many years. My work in both leather, like you see behind you, and the knives has gone around the world. And in this channel, I'm going to share some of the tips and tricks that'll hopefully help you along on your own journey. For me, the number one biggest benefit of having a splitter in my own workshop is being able to turn those unusable pieces of leather into a usable, sellable product. So in my personal leather work, I've made a lot of briefcases where I was working with leathers such as this bridle leather, which is around about 1.8 to 2 millimeters thick. And often I'd have off-cut pieces of around about this size. The splitter allowed me to make beautiful wallets out of the same piece of leather. So one of the biggest benefits, being able to turn your scraps into a profitable product. Before I go any further, I'd also like to mention that when I got this machine many years ago now, there weren't the types of services that are available today. For, for example, companies like Rocky Mountain Leather Supply will actually split your leather for you. You can order the leather in the size that you're needing and wanting. But again, as a full-time artisan, moving and turning your scrap pieces of leather into profitable items is essential for keeping a business going. A little bit about this splitter. This is, a, this is what's called a hand crank splitter. There are several different types of these splitters on the market. Um, there are older models as well. This one comes out of a factory called Hitex. I believe they marketed it as a cowboy machine over in the USA. But the functionality of these hand crank splitters are all pretty much the same. It has a bottom roller, uh, which has got grooves on it, which feeds the leather through, a top roller, which gives pressure on that leather, and a blade uh, that obviously splits the leather, and a couple of springs and so forth. Um, these ones are obviously really, really easy to use because you just turn a crank and with turning the crank it feeds the leather through uh, so a lot easier to use than these other types of ones that you pull through so I've just cut off some of this bridle hide uh, this hide is three millimeters thick so that's a piece of three more thick leather I'm going to feed it through the splitter just to show you how one of these splitters work There, I've taken it down to two millimeters. I've taken a full millimeter off the split. Turn that down a little bit more. One point four millimeter. I'll take that on again to get a really nice, very fine split. That has become lining leather now. It has become so thin that is lining leather. So for this last week, I made this wallet, a nice little vertical wallet with uh, cash pouches on the other side. I was testing out some new thread. So I turned a piece of off-cut bridle hide. This is three millimeter thick bridle hide. Ran it through my splitter and turned it into a wallet. A splitter can also save you a lot of time when you're doing unique kinds of works. So for example, on the wallet that I did in the previous video, I put this detailed piece of leather at the top. It's a different color to the wallet um, and adds a nice visual look. I did hand scarf this, so it takes a bit of time, but let me show you how quickly that same result will be done on a splitter. I have got a strip of leather sitting over here, the same sort of a size, and I'll run that through the splitter. And that piece of leather now is sitting at 0.44 of a millimeter, which is the perfect size to double up if you're going to be using decorative looks. It's a, it becomes a lining leather at that point. 
Now I know a few people over the years have told me they have not been able to get the performance out of their splitters that I'm able to get out of mine. There are a couple of reasons for that. I have tweaked this machine. As I'm busy taking off the blade of the splitter, I need to say that when I first got this machine, I really disliked it. Um, I just was not able to achieve any good results with it. So I did change it. Um, I changed the blade on the machine. I'm gonna show you what I've done to the blade. So if you do have one, uh, you can change your blade to something like I've done. Um, having, the, having, a, having a blade that will perform well is everything on one of these machines. Um, and having a blade that can get through the different types of leather efficiently because these machines were not designed to split thin leathers, especially the types of leathers that I work with, which range from around about 1.3 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters. Um, these machines were designed for, for soling leathers, um, which is where they obviously perform excellently at, uh, with the blades that they come standard with, but I've had to change mine, and that's why it's able to split the way that it does. Be careful when you're handling your blades, especially if they're sharp. The best upgrade I've made to this machine is changing out the blade. When I got the machine, the blade came with quite a fat, flat grind. I'm gonna to explain to you what that means in a moment. So what I've done is I've created a blade that has a hollow grind on both sides. So if you have got one of my scarving knives that I make, that's a hollow grind. So the blade has been done the same way as the scarving knife. So the double hollow grind has done two things. It's allowed the blade to sit quite close up against into the rollers. Let me draw that quickly. So we look at a side view of the machine where the two rollers are sitting together. Doing the hollow grind has allowed for that blade to sit in between those rollers. So the other thing a hollow grind does is it thins out So the other thing the hollow grind does is it thins out the profile of the blade. So for example, when the blades come with what's called a flat grind, and I know they are advertised like this as well, the cross section of the blade here is the cutting edge. So the cross section of the blade is quite a bit thicker than a hollow grind would do. Um, this is obviously really, really good for uh, your big thick harness leathers, soling leathers, what the machine is actually designed for. Um, but when you're wanting to split these thinner types of leathers, getting a thinner profile on that blade and allowing it to sit closer to the rollers has done the trick for me. So this is what I've done to mine. The other thing that I did with this hollow grind is I did it with an 18 inch wheel. So if you are wanting to get a custom blade uh, or have your current blade customized, I did mine on an 18 inch wheel. That's a big wheel, guys. I think the smallest wheel that would probably work on something like this around about a 14 inch wheel. Um, I wouldn't go any smaller. Another thing people have often asked me is how have I managed to get my splitter to split so evenly on left and right hand sides of the leather passing through. So my, my splitter will split it around about a one tenth of a variance side to side. The way that you do that, these rollers uh, can be moved independently up and down. So you need to make sure that these rollers are sitting evenly. The last thing out of the three critical things I would say to get one of these machines working nicely is adjusting your spring tensions. Now it's got a spring on either side. On the side of the crank, for whatever reason, the tension on the crank side uh, needs to be a lot less um, because the bottom roller is supported a lot by the extra weight of the steel and obviously just how the cranking system works over here. So my my spring on the opposite side of the crank is a has a lot more tension on it than this side that has the crank on it. Nice, easy, quick way to check if your rollers and your blade are running correctly or running level to each, level to each other. It's just to do it by eye, do an eye test. I've got a piece of scrap leather over here. I'm going to take that and feed it halfway through. So that leather is just sitting in between the rollers and the blade at this point. And I can go down, shine a light on that side. This allows me to see 
how level the roller is, the bottom roller is, to the blade. Obviously the blade stays static, it's only the roller that moves up and down on the, on the, on the two springs. Um, so this is a really easy way to see if your uh, roller to blade, your bottom roller to blade is nice and even. Um, at this point now, for example, if my left hand side was down, I could change that height of the spring on the side um, and vice versa. So that's a quick, easy way to adjust that. Take this piece of leather through. Nice even split. Mine has obviously been calibrated. I've done a lot of work on this to get it right for the different types of leathers that I work with. But there's a nice even split. I do keep my springs at quite a tight tension. This allows me to take leathers like a 1.3 millimeter thick leather and turn that into 0.5 millimeter lining leathers. Uh, probably not recommended for these kinds of machines, but that's how I do it. So do you actually need a leather splitter in your own workshop? Well, if you're working with thicker leathers and you have got off-cut pieces of thicker leathers lying around, turning those pieces of leather into profitable, saleable items is obviously essential for, a, for any artisan. Um, the downside of that is you're going to have to be proficient in sharpening. These machines do not run well if that blade is not sharp. So you're gonna to have to be proficient in sharpening and possibly even having a, a good change out blade for the machine. So I hope you have found some value out of this video and seeing how I turn my off cut pieces of leather into beautiful little items. If you have enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up below and do subscribe to the channel. We're adding new content to it all the time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.